Welcome back to Oakhaven. We have spent a fair amount of time over the last few years treating Japanese stilt grass. Um, if you want to understand how to identify Japanese stilt grass, we've got other videos that explain that better. Uh, what we're going to focus on today is the best way to treat it. Uh, so I'll say that the, the way that we treat it mostly, and I'm really happy with it, um, is with a claim extra. We'll show you some te test plots that we did with a claim extra, and it seems to hit it out, hit it pretty hard, and uh, and it's good. A claim extra is a um, a grass specific herbicide, so that it doesn't kill off the broadleaf um, forbs, so it just kills off grass, and then it doesn't always kill off all the grass either. Uh, right now, as a matter of fact, we've got a another video that's in the process. We're three weeks into a test plot uh, in our lawn area where we're using a claim extra to kill Japanese stilt grass in our lawn because it doesn't kill um, some of the fescues and um, Kentucky bluegrass, but it does kill uh, um, Japanese stiltgrass. So we're hopefully going to kill off the, the Japanese stiltgrass out of our lawn, but still leave our lawn uh, nice and healthy. So I say we've been treating this for several years. I'm kind of mixed. Uh, there are times when I walk through the woods uh, and I see an area that we've treated, and when we treat an area, we mark it with a blue flag and then we date it. Um, and I see it, and I look through, and I don't see any Japanese stilt grass, and I feel it good, and I'm like flying high, and I'm walking along, and then I see three more patches in the woods of Japanese stilt grass, and then I start to feel a little depressed. Um, so it, it is, we are definitely having a positive impact. There is a lot less Japanese stilt grass than there was before we started. Um, it's just a long haul job, and that's part of uh, natural area management, unfortunately. So we are standing in an area right now that we treated last year. Um, so it is right now it is July 23rd or so. Uh, we treated it last September, which meant <coughs> excuse me, the plants were pretty big, um, maybe had started to, to flower. That's, that's really late to be treating with herbicide. So we treated this area here with a 2% glyphosate solution. That's what we use when we're trying to kill off everything. So that was way high, but we chose to do that because we, it, well, I'll show you what we started with. We started with a patch of Japanese stilt grass like this. If you can see that, this is just a mess. Um, everything you see here, there's um, some false nettle and there's uh, white snake root and there's Japanese stilt grass. And that's most of what we see here. Um, so there's plenty of it. And if you take just a step over into the area we treated, you know, it, it, it didn't kill off everything. There's still stuff growing here. Um, some of it like uh, oriental bittersweet, we don't want to be growing here, um, but it's going to recover, is, I guess is my point. But, and there's still some patches, some small patches of Japanese stilt grass through here. So that's a 2% glyphosate solution. Why would we choose glyphosate over um, the uh, Acclaim Extra, which I, I like pretty much? Um, People like um, glyphosate because it's really, it, the, you know, people are going to argue with me on this, but it's more environmentally friendly. Uh, glyphosate breaks down in the environment um, very quickly and it doesn't translocate very much. So using glyphosate um, has some advantages. It also, when we, uh, I was treating our, our creek bed the other day and I wanted, the Acclaim Extra is pretty toxic to aquatic life, so I don't like using that in an area that's close to the, um, the stream or will flow into the stream. So I would rather use glyphosate with a surfactant, the, the, the chemical that we add to it to make it sheet across the, the, um, the leaf and absorb better. So we use a surfactant that's more um, environmentally friendly. We actually use uh, Shore Clear Plus, which is made for using along shoreline, so you can use it to treat um, cattails and things that are along the shoreline, and if it gets off into the water, it doesn't kill the fish, it doesn't kill the aquatic life. Um, side note, it's normally not the glyphosate that does that killing, it's the, it's the surfactant that's added to the glyphosate that has the impact on the, um, uh, the aquatic life. Just to clarify, uh, I make it sound like a claim extra is this big hazardous material um, when I say that uh, glyphosate is, is less hazardous. That's not really the case. Um, in an aquatic situation, a claim extra has problems, um, but not necessarily in a terrestrial habitat. Uh, the, the toxicity for mammals and for birds um, is really, really low. Uh, so I, I feel comfortable using a claim extra in, a, um, in an upland setting. It also degrades over time so that um, when they use it in a crop situation, um, it, 
at harvest time, there's no indication that the acclaim extra is left in the soil. Uh, so I, I feel good about how it's working, just not in an aquatic habitat. So just wanted to clarify that. So um, people like using glyphosate rather than the acclaim extra. 2% may be too strong. The recommended dosage from the state foresters around here is to use a half a percent. Um, I haven't used that before. So half a percent supposedly of glyphosate will kill the Japanese stiltgrass, but not kill a lot of the forbs. I'm guessing that's because a lot of the forbs, a lot of the perennials, it may knock them back a little bit, but they, they're more rigorous. Japanese stiltgrass is an annual so it doesn't take much to knock it out. So we're gonna do some test plots. We're gonna, we're gonna try some things. We're gonna try a half a percent glyphosate. We're gonna try a 1% glyphosate um, and a 1.5% glyphosate and try to find a, what the happy point is there on the glyphosate. Uh, we're gonna use some acclaim extra so we can compare it to uh, the other things that we work with. Um, we're gonna try some other things too. Um, because it's an annual, we're thinking maybe we can just kill off the top growth and that will be enough and it won't uh it won't set seed and that's all we need to do is all we need to do is to is keep it from setting seed before winter so we're going to try some some vinegar some five percent acetic acid and some uh, 15 percent acetic acid uh, regular household vinegar is five percent acetic acid we've had we've done other other videos on that on the lesser celandine where i really encourage people not to do things like um environmentally friendly things like vinegar because really it just kills off the top and doesn't do anything for the roots. And this is a situation where it may be helpful, it may be useful because um, the top growth is mo mostly what we're worried about. The, the roots, it's an annual, they're gonna, it's gonna die back anyway. All we need to do is to, to get it down to ground level and then keep it there for right now. So we're gonna try it out and see what happens. So we're gonna set up some test plots through here. We also, we did do some, a test plot in here last year. I tried burning. Uh, it was, again, late. It was in September. There were some uh, flowers on the plants. When it's that late, you can't use a, an herbicide because it takes, you know, a few weeks for it to, to die with the herbicide. If it's already setting seed, all you're going to do is you're going to kill the plant and those seeds are going to fall on the ground and they're going to re-sprout. So I came out here with a torch and I torched a big area. Um, that seemed pretty effective until I go back now and I look at it and I, to be honest, I really can't see much difference between the burned area and the, the control area right next to it. Again, that was later on in the season, so it had already started to set seed. Maybe it had dropped seeds. Maybe there was just a lot of seed in the area. I don't know. It, it didn't seem to function very well. So this is going to be our test plot. This is what we didn't treat last year. And um, let me just show you. So here I have an orange flag on here and I've written down that we treated towards the road that way and it was untreated to the back. So um, for us, you know, we're, we're trying to standardize things as much as possible. So an orange flag is a boundary flag. So this shows the boundary of the area that we treated. Um, we, we use blue pin flags for um, treating stilt grass. We use um, yellow pin flags for lesser celandine when we find that, which we don't find very often. Um, and we use pink pin flags for garlic mustard, which we find a lot of. Um, we have thousands and thousands of uh, pin, pin, pink, huh, that's harder to say, pink pin flags uh, in the woods. Uh, what that does is it, it shows us where we've picked something and where we expect a seed bed to be. So these are orange flags. Orange means our boundary. So let me <coughs> show you what we're doing here. I have made up little bottles. So here I have a bottle made up of half a percent of glyphosate um, with just a standard surfactant in here. We're up in an upland area. Um, we're going to spray this out completely in this area. So we'll, we'll walk over here and I'll show you what we're doing here. I've marked the boundary with these orange um, snow flags, snow posts here. I'm going to use this and just spray all the stilt grass along this boundary until I run out of my um, sample thing here. Now that's not going to be a lot, I recognize that, but it's going to take us to a point. When I get to the point, I'm going to put up some more flags to show that that's the end of it. I'm going to shift to the next level. So we're going from half a percent um, glyphosate to a 1% glyphosate to a 1.5% glyphosate, and then we'll switch to the Acclaim Extra and then the vinegar and some other things 
and uh, I'll mark off where the boundary is on each of these things. So we're not going to get back to this. By the time you see this video, um, there should be huge areas of dead stilt grass here. Uh, we won't post this until we have something to show you. So I'll start working on that now. Um, when I'm aerosoling any type of herbicide, um, I use a respirator. So this is a um, an organic um, compound respirator. Uh, you can't just use a you know a face mask like you would use for a, like a, um, a surgery face mask. You need something that actually filters filters the air. I've got gloves on, uh, long pants and shoes. I, I don't have long shirts on. I should have a long shirt on. That'd be better uh, PPE. Um, so it's just, it's like, it's supposed to be 95 degrees out. It's really hot out today. So we'll do what we can. Here we go. I'll start spraying. So here's where the science falls apart in this whole thing, is that I made up all of these little spray bottles, but I obviously spray these bottles differently than I do with a pressurized um, gallon or two gallon sprayer. Um, I just went through and sprayed this with half a percent glyphosate, and it's a fair amount of effort, and I don't get underneath everything very well. Um, when I'm spraying with the Acclaim Extra, which I spray in a two two gallon pressurized sprayer, I get everything soaked. You know, it, I can put the wand underneath things and I can spray underneath the, uh, you know, the, the, um, the white snake root and other things that are growing over the top of it. And it's pretty easy to get complete coverage. It's a lot harder to get complete coverage with these little spray bottles. So I have to understand that when I'm coming back and evaluating this, that I'm probably missing some little plants that I wouldn't miss if I was using a, a, a spray bottle. But it'll still give me an idea of how it, uh, how it kills the, the stilt grass and what it does to the other forbs and things like that that are um, in the area. So I just finished the half percent glyphosate. I'm gonna to shift to the one percent glyphosate um, just to give you an idea. I, again, in a small bottle, I've got all of the glyphosates in small bottles because I had those um, handy and it's easy to mix up. I don't have a lot of these um, spray bottles. Um, so then I will shift to the Acclaim Extra, which I have in this two um, gallon sprayer. I will just do a swath of it. Uh, when we're all done, I'm going to clean up these areas that uh, I treated last year and there's still some some stilt grass that's growing up. So I'll, I'll, I'll spray these areas in the other areas. Um, and then I've got uh, two concentrations of the vinegar. I've got the 5% which is just household vinegar in this sprayer. And then I mixed up, I took a 30% um, herbicidal um, vinegar and I cut it in half so it's 15%. So that's what's in this um, sprayer and I'll spray that too. So I'll go ahead and spray this all out. Um, I would rather not have Julie here um, filming while I'm spraying things since we only have one um, uh, mask. So we will come back in you know, a couple weeks and see how things are going. It's now the 6th of October. Uh, we've given this test plot 10 weeks to, um, to show its stuff. So we'll, we'll see what's happened here. And it's pretty obvious what's happened. So let's come over and look. Our first test plot, which was half a percent glyphosate, is pretty bare. I mean, there is absolutely no um, Japanese stilt grass growing through here. Um, but there's really no anything else either. You can see that there's a lot of, um, this looks like it was a, um, maybe a spice bush that it has died. And uh, this is another shrub of some sort. The only thing I see growing here, I do see some um, oriental bittersweet growing here, but pretty much everything has been knocked out. So to me, the idea that the half percent glyphosate is going to be more friendly for the perennials that are living in the woods doesn't quite bear up. Now I'm sure that the plants that are under the ground that didn't have leaves visible when we sprayed with the glyphosate, I'm sure they're fine. The glyphosate doesn't have root activity, so it did not go in there and kill off the spring ephemerals that may be living here. But as far as what was up and living when we sprayed it in July, 
there is pretty much nothing left over. So, and that's at half a percent. And it was pretty effective at half a percent. I need to consider that when we're treating things. We generally treat things at 2%. Maybe we could get by with less. The next plot over is a 1% plot. And it looks pretty similar to the half a percent plot. There is really, there is no Japanese stilt grass visible. And the only living things I see are the, uh, the oriental bittersweet and maybe a little bit of autumn olive. So 1% glyphosate worked very well at killing off the um, siltgrass. And in the last 10 weeks, nothing has re-sprouted. So the roots did not re-sprout. That was one of my concerns, was treating it early enough that it doesn't produce uh, flowers and seeds. Maybe it would, it would kill off the surface, but maybe it might re-sprout or something like that. Or there would be other things that would re-sprout um, or germinate in that time. I don't see any indication of that at all. So our third plot here is the Acclaim Extra. And Acclaim Extra, you'll notice that right away there's a huge difference here because the Acclaim Extra plot is full of um, white snake root and there's some um, false nettle and other things in here. Uh, so, I mean, there's other things that we don't want. There's some autumn olive in here. There's some um, Oriental bittersweet, there's some multiflora rose, there's some Japanese honeysuckle. So <laughs> there are things that survived in here that I may not have wanted to survive. That's a serious consideration when we're talking about what we want to use to treat things. If we're working in a pristine area and we're trying to preserve everything we possibly can, a claim extra is a great option for that. Maybe if what we're trying to do is get rid of some of these other things and then we're going to let the, the um, woodlands reclaim a little bit, maybe it would be better to treat this with glyphosate. So it would knock back some of those things, and then we would seed in. Fortunately, we have a, a seed base coming in of the the white snake root and the, the um, um, ashes and some of the other things, and let those things seed back into here, and maybe that's a better option. Right now, I tend to look at it as I want to do as little damage as possible, so the Acclaim Extra does that in this situation. I look around and Japanese stiltgrass is completely gone. Okay, let's go check on the 15% the um, acetic acid or the um, herbicide strength vinegar. And it is also, the, the it goes to these orange posts here. It is pretty much decimated. So the, the Japanese stiltgrass, again, Japanese stiltgrass is completely gone. And just so that we know, there is Japanese stiltgrass in our control areas around, so it's not like it's just past season. Um, I, I had video from a few weeks ago that showed this better, where the Japanese stiltgrass was alive and green and looking great, and this was just uh, down to nothing. Um, but, so the vinegar worked pretty well. It looks like it knocked it back. I can see some Japanese stiltgrass there, uh, so it maybe didn't quite kill it off as well as I would hope, but I probably just missed, that was just one plant. Um, vinegar seemed to work pretty well. Again, I'm concerned about what vinegar does to the, um, the soil pH. So maybe we'll come out and take a soil pH, um, see if it affects the soil. Uh, we live in uh, glaciated Ohio, so that the soil tends to be really alkaline. So a little bit of acid may not make too much of a difference, um, but it's something to consider. So back here, we have the 5% acetic acid. So this plot is basically household vinegar. So what does household vinegar do? do? Household vinegar, I can see a lot of stilt grass all through here. Um, so it did not kill everything off. It knocked it back. If I look at the area that was 5% uh, acetic acid, and then I look back there at an area that we didn't treat, it's completely covered back there where we didn't treat, and it's spotty here in the 5% vinegar area. I would not like to do this because I'd have to come back and do something to this area. It, it was not very effective. If you just have a small um, area to, to treat, maybe household vinegar would work fine because it would knock it back to the point where in a little while you could weed the rest of it. Maybe too big an area to weed in by itself, but you could weed it um, if it was knocked back to this point something to think about. You know, another thing we didn't do as, an, as a test was just weeding. 
we do a lot of weeding of Japanese stiltgrass. We, we were weeding as we walked out here to this site right now because it's, uh, it's too late in the season to, to spray things. And when you just see one plant here, one plant there, it does weed out pretty easily. Okay, now we'll go over and check the area that we, um, we torched, we burned, not this season, but last season, to see how that looks. So this is the area that we uh, burned last year. Uh, we started from here and it went like 10 feet out one direction and 30 feet in another direction on the 17th of August, no, 17th of September last year. So that was pretty late in the season. There were definitely blooms in place. I really hadn't seen any um, seeds in place at the time. But to be honest, the fact that there are so many plants here, it did not do a very good job of killing it off. So I'm guessing that there was, there was more seed that had already dropped um, or that burning, it didn't burn the seeds, it just burned up the plants and then the seeds dropped to the ground. Either way you look at it, um, burning that late in the season did not seem to help. Is burning still a, a possible tool to use? Maybe it would have to be earlier um, than the September 17th for us in, we're in the Cincinnati area. Uh, so it would have to be um, earlier than that. So maybe there's a point where the, it, it's later that we don't want to, ha we don't have like a three week or a four week window for the Acclaim Extra to kill off the plant, but we want to knock it down uh, just at the early stages of bud formation. Maybe burning off would be a good option. One of the things you have to consider with Japanese stiltgrass is that timing wise even when there's a the the flowers are closed at the top and all of the obvious things are closed Japanese stiltcrest produces cleistogamous flowers cleistogamous cleisto meaning hidden hidden flowers and mosquitoes hidden flowers um, along the stem where you can peel back the the uh, the leaf sheath and you find more flowers. And when I do that, so I don't know if this is in focus here. Um, when you do that, those seeds seem to be further along than the seeds at the top. That's just my general feeling when I look at it. It seems like the seeds that are produced along the stem, the cleistogamous seeds, are. Um, or the seeds from the cleistogamous flowers um, are, are further along. So maybe it doesn't look like it's seeded along here and it has seeded and the seeds are ripe further along. Something we need to look into uh, more. So that's what we've done with our tests. Um, I think it was pretty effective at killing off the stilt grass. There's several options there. Uh, it's up to you to decide what's the most appropriate method for uh, what your situation and what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, I, again, I have mixed results as to how, how we're doing on this. Sometimes I feel really good about it. Sometimes I'm a little concerned that we're not, uh, not getting on top of it. Right now I'm in a, I'm in a happy point. I'm in a place where I feel like we've got some tools that are, are working. So I feel good about it. If you've got tools that are working for you or you've got questions, um, please leave them in the comments. I would like to get a conversation going. This is a pretty serious concern. You know, we just posted a video, um, about how to recognize Japanese stiltgrass, and we went to a local nature center to show just the impact it has when this is just like inundating all of the, the native plants. And it's a serious concern. And unfortunately, it's something that not a lot of people recognize. So, and I think that people are intimidated from the fact that it's a, it's a grass. Um, so I appreciate you watching this video. It kind of indicates that maybe you're looking for um, ways to, to fix the problem. Um, thanks for helping out.